Right, okay. So, uh, the background to this... Oh, I'll just wait for... Uh, oh, I'm going to make the writing bigger. <coughs> right. Yeah, so the, <laughs> so the background to this is... I was messing about with, or I fancy messing about with um, doing uh, AWS Lambda and um, doing Node Lambda. So that automatically made me think, oh, I could do this in Fable instead. So then I thought, okay, so I'm going to do a Node Lambda in Fable. And then I thought, okay, so now I just need to uh, pull in the, the Fable package for AWS. And then I found that there wasn't one. So I thought, oh, well, I can just go through the, the Fable, uh, sorry, the AWS JavaScript JSON definitions and generate all the Fable packages. Uh, basically, I just went down a random rabbit hole, really. And so off the back of that, I thought, um, first of all, I thought I'd just generate it using uh, Dot Liquid or Razor or something like that. And then I remembered that T4 is designed for this kind of thing. So I thought, oh, I'll have a play with T4 and see if that works. And then discovered that T4 only works with VB or C Sharp. Um, but then I discovered that there's another project called um, Templatus. And this is what that talk is about. So that was a bit of a random ramble, but um, hopefully it will work. Um, I did have an issue with it where it didn't work at all, um, but uh, I got in touch with the guy that wrote it and he fixed it. So hopefully we should get a bit more mileage out of it. Uh, right, so uh, let's create um, a project. Let's type in the right commands and get a project. Where do you think it's oh, I suppose. right? Uh, right. Okay. So, first thing, I guess we should install packet. You might be sure to install it. You know, just the stuff. Uh, that should do the trick. I think. Didn't like that. <laughs> okay, so that is that. And I will install Templatus. While that's doing its thing. Has anyone used T4 before? Does, does everyone know what T4 is? Pretend I don't, because I don't. Oh, uh, it's basic. Uh, in, oh, I'll, 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 I'll show you the. Uh, right. Okay. So T4 templates. So it's a Microsoft thing that's uh, built into um, Visual Studio and. It's basically um, a templating system, but the the code is built that that generates the template is actually built into the template itself. So okay, here we go. So if you have so you might have a template like this, and you just embed your directors in there like that. Um, it tends to get used a lot to do things like um, code generation. So, um, so say like you were building proxies or something like that, you'd use T4 to, to generate your generated code. So something like, like that, for example. Does that, 
that's an uh, incredibly brief overview, but does that make sense? Okay, so, so a, a yeah, cool. So we've got templates there. So uh, the template file itself um, is a has a. An extension of that, and could you make the slide a little bigger? Uh, can make this side bigger. Yeah. Is that big enough or a bit smaller? Is that too big? Oh, it's okay. Okay. There we go. So, um, if you are using this, the, 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 there's a, a little bit of setup to it first. So you've got um, you've got the the header bit. So if we put in the header first, I'm just cut and pasting this because otherwise it's typing. So let's try that for example. Right, okay, so if I save this file, let's run this. So, the, because we are, th this is quite an old project, so it's, it's not .NET Core, it's .NET um, old school. So we do a minus T to tell it which um, which template file we want to run, and we just do that, and hopefully it won't blow itself up. Yeah, cool. So we now have a templated line of text. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> but we can do more. So. Um, if we want to uh, put an expression into this, we would do something like um, So, we should now see in here, if we run this again, as you would expect, notice here we haven't got the brackets on it, so even though it looks a bit c sharpy, it's actually F-sharp, honest. So, uh, so, we've got that far, so that's not fantastically interesting but uh, then what we can do is um, for example um, we could also do I'm cutting and pasting shamelessly here so actually let's uh, so as, as well as uh, expressions, we can actually have code blocks where it just runs a chunk of code and it then supplies you with functions which will then uh, output the text. So we could do something like So okay, let's try um, let's try printing a list of numbers. <clears throat> I 
Unfortunately, because it's a, a template file rather than an FF, uh, FSX file, it doesn't give you the IntelliSense that you'd normally see. It's kind of ask, is there an AVS code extension that's more wanting for? Mm, don't think so. But um, I have a plan. I've not tried it, and I'm going to try it. So it'll either work or it will be a crashing disaster. But it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, so I will definitely benefit from pair programming at this point. <laughs> Okay, so does that make sense to everyone? I think you're missing for the sprint F, aren't you? Missing the second round, so. Yep, good spot. Does that look about right? Yeah. Okay, let's let's try it. Maybe not. Is it Saturday? Oh, oh yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. So the compiler does actually give you sensible errors, which is good. So is that using Roslyn under the hood? Uh, no, it's using um, the... Um, F-sharp compilers? F-sharp, what's the one with the I? Interactive. Didn't like that, did it? Uh, oh, it needs to be a literal, doesn't it? What does it? Can anyone see what's wrong with that? Uh, touch string is not compatible. Is it for the letters? Yeah, they ignore the return. They also. Ignore, I know what we can do. That should do the trick, shouldn't it? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. Wrong function. Oh. Right, now let's give it another go. There we go. Phew. So what's your original code work? Uh, yes. Possibly. Probably. There you go. So, um, yeah, I can pop that in and give it a whirl. Oh, that's all right, is it? No. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> okay, so... So, okay, so... You can see there how we can um, have code blocks and then bits of templated text and then a bit more of a code block. Um, there's... You can also include um, other template fragments as kind of include files. Haven't really looked into that in too much depth. Uh, one of the other things you can do, which kind of um, is kind of interesting, is um, you can have variables in it as well. So <coughs> let's just see uh, if we can make that work. Okay. Mm. 
so yeah, so you can see there how we've um, uh, just passed in parameters into it and we just kind of can pick them up quite easily. Was that generated during this time? Right from that time? No, it's not, is it? <coughs> Don't know why that is. <laughs> But I'm sure there's a good reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a naughty line. But yeah, I'm sure there's a good reason for that, but I don't know what it is. Maybe it doesn't like white space. No, killed it. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's this uh, this thing here. I wonder if that was it. Yeah. So something was failing silently there. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, yeah, I was going to say, would you, would you use this for, as it were, documenting? Um, your code and actually get some type safety on the sort of method calls that you're doing in the code match or are valid, syntactically valid. Because I know I've seen I've seen some tool which generates HTML um, documentation for code, but it actually does static analysis that what you're typing into it for the code examples are valid. I was just wondering if it's be used in a similar way, because if you try to generate your templates. Uh, I don't know, but my gut instinct is there probably isn't, because this is it's quite an old project now. It's not it's not really been updated for a while. Um, but um, it, it shouldn't be impossible. What, one of the things that I thought you could do, and I'm going to give it a try now, so we'll see, is uh, so um, one of the things you can do as well is you can um, include assemblies and then call on those assemblies. So if I were to, um, yeah, let's, let's see what happens here. Okay, so let us have a think here and what we could do with this. So, okay, let's, um, and, um,
Right, does that make sense so far? Okay. Right. Uh, right. Uh, can anyone remember how to build this thing? As I don't have a fake script. Oh, well, you made the class look, hasn't it? Made a fake script for you. Uh, oh, no, it has actually. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it all back. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so that is in here. So if I do build.sh, so hopefully this will now uh, build our library. Maybe not. Um, Has it made it in the direction of the uh, No, I um, don't think so. Well, uh, yeah, probably. <coughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. <coughs> oh. Sorry. Uh, right, so we're going to need to do the packages restore. Was it added into your packet dependencies? I didn't see it. Right, so, so we've got the package references, which there's not a great deal in there. Uh, yeah, it's expecting there to be uh, a <coughs> Build a uh, yes, yeah, not put them in there, is it? Well, that's okay because we have a packet expert. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So. Um, group. It's group colon build or just group build? Yep. Does it need a colon or anything? No, I don't think it does. Downline uh, indent. You can copy the source from above. Which is find the source page. Uh, oh, it's after fake, isn't it? So if I were to do a packet um, install, I think it's fake. Well, caps as well. That one? Yep. Right. That's quite interesting how it skipped over the whole bit that we've already done and just pulling in the differences. It seems to be doing something. <coughs> hmm? 25 seconds. Yep. That's super fast. It is my machine. And it is code Wi Fi. The number of times I've whitelisted the packet that makes it just ridiculous. Because that is basically just your um, what's it called? Um, virus detection system. Just stop when you make a network request. That's all it does. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's the majority of time right now that it does. Yeah, that's, I suppose that yeah, that's a good point actually. That's very Okay, right. Okay. So uh, but that was a lot easier than messing about with NuGet. So, in theory, we should be able to run this now, and it should do something. <coughs> that looks like it's doing various uh, .NET types. So that's all just going to be. Um, F uh, fake stuff, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, this the the thing that um, I nine installs the the fake script that generates actually installs the .NET CLI as part of its setup. 
uh, which is quite useful. Um, yeah. I kind of prefer to have it already in the environment. Yeah. Whenever I, when I started doing the original build, I used I and I to generate the build scripts, but I didn't really like the build script that I generated, so I just ripped it out. Yeah, I'm not sure I care about pretty much all of this. Exactly. Uh, right. <clears throat> so. So let's uh, let's just shrink this down a bit. The thing is, you need .NET and the .NET CLI to use Packet Restore for the new CS project format. You have mm. to have. So you can run .NET Restore yourself. Yeah. Um, and then strip everything else. Out. No. Let's just see what it does. Yeah. So is it actually installing .NET Core in like a local folder? No, it, it it does a global install. Um, or have I just broken it? Possibly. It may be because of there's a fake that's being run because you're using fake. Uh, no, it was the .NET CLI. It might it might have been because I broke it halfway through. Empty error message. What's the store? Oh, right. <clears throat> Let's just try it without the. Uh... In actual fact, all we really need is. Um... Just delete the installs. Yeah. Could just run MS build, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. Outrageous idea, I know. It's a great idea. There's nothing that can go wrong with this idea. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that. Right, it's built stuff. So, given that. Maybe we can do something like and then Close quote. Mm. Close quote. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So, in theory, we should now be able to do something like, and I guess we'll find out if it works or not. Probably have saved that before I built it. That will look all right. Right. Okay. So. 
It works. Cool. So, A, I'm quite impressed that that worked first time. <laughs> um, but that also um, gives you a way in to um, A, have the INI helping you out with your code. And also, if you wanted to, I don't know, wrap the logic in tests or whatever, you could hive it all out into a separate DLL and then just um, have the, the templates just iterate over the, the view models that you produce from your code. That's one thought I had. Um, do you use T4 templates to generate like, um, like topple the, the, the increasing number of cases of like generic arguments? That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was saying. Yeah, because yeah. I, I have a project that would benefit from that. Because <laughs> I actually just build it using LinkPad script something to generate a CS file, and just actually build the CS itself. Yeah, yeah. So anywhere where you've got boilerplate mm. that might change, but you just don't want to have to. Yeah. You just want to get spit it out in one variable, it goes in and changes. Regenerate yeah, and and that and that boilerplate, it can it, it's just text. So you could use this to generate C sharp. If you wanted to, you could use T four to generate F sharp. But the actual uh, code in the template would need to be C sharp. Mm. So you might be kind of really messing with your brain. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it could be done. It's just text at the end of the day. Um, yeah, the, there's some other stuff about the include files um, and there's also, in fact, I'll, I'll bring it over onto the... So, yeah. So, basically, you've got those directives just we've just spoken about, um, the controls that we've spoken about. And then we've used that function, but you've got a whole bunch of functions to, to basically output text. And that is basically it. There's not a lot more to it. Um, yeah. There it is. Yeah. How did you get on with your original premise for this, which was the, the template for the Babel lambdas in AWS? Um, and maybe that'd be my next presentation. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it, 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 it kind of got this far, and then the battery ran out, and I didn't right. have my charger, <laughs> which kind of killed it. And, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Any, any other questions? For a long time, code generation of this. Does, for example, if you want to do some kind of a HTML template based on database values. Um, you could, there's, there's no reason why you couldn't use this. I think this lends itself more to a kind of offline batch processing kind of thing. So you'll, you'll find this is used quite a lot in Visual Studio to, to generate code um, because you generate it and then it's done. There's, there's not a lot of static content that you're going to be rebuilding each time. Um, but yeah, I guess if you were building, say, like a static site, you could use this quite, quite happily. Yeah, the pain point we always had was just that lack of IntelliSense yeah. inside the actual template, which looks to be the same with templates as, as it is with T4. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure that you could build it in, but it's probably a big job for the amount of benefit that you'd get yeah. from it. I guess that's why I haven't done it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, just being able to drag in the DLL, it does mean that it's not maybe quite as self-contained as you might want. It's not just a, a template and, a, and you run it against a, a compiler. But, um, but yeah, it does look like it might make the thing a bit more manageable, especially if you've got a lot of stuff going on. Okay.